What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to check out a physics add-on for Blender that lets you easily set up physics for your scenes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so it's been a bit since I talked about RBD Lab um, and they made some uh, massive changes to the program. So I wanted to talk through how to use it. So first off, depending on when you watch this, this is currently on sale during the Blender Market Black Friday sale. So you might be able to pick it up at a 25% discount. So go check that out right now. Um, that's gonna last for a few more days. Um, this is a great tool for automating the Blender physics setup process. So basically this is a tool that has everything contained inside of it that allows you to set up different fractures and other things like that so that you can actually simulate things breaking inside of Blender. So um, you would have to do all of this stuff manually and there is a lot to it. Um, so this is something that really makes your life a lot easier. And so let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and just check out an easy setup of a system and how easy it is to get going with physics in Blender. All right, and so let's say we want to do something really simple. So we're just going to have a physics animation where something falls and breaks another object in here. And so the way that you're going to do that is you're going to start by creating your object that you want to break. So in this case, I'm just going to create a cube. I'm going to scale it up then I'm going to scale it on the Z axis a little bit. So something like this. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we've applied our rotation and scale. But then the way that we want to do this is we want to jump over into RBD Lab. The cool thing about RBD Lab is what it's going to do is it's going to basically break this down into steps that you can follow from start to finish in order to have a physics simulation. So you can see how in the modules they're basically numbered and you can just kind of follow along with these for the most part in order to add that physics. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to take this object and we need to fracture it, right? Because what it's going to do is it's going to break into a bunch of different particles. And so to do that, we want to use the fracture module. And I'm going to go ahead and drag Bonnie out of this collection for right now. Um, and what I want to do is I want to select that collection. Now, we can go through and we can use this in order to fracture our object. And there's multiple different ways that you can do this, right? You can do this based on a texture, organically using Booleans. I usually start with the standard right here. And what we wanna do is we just wanna scroll down. And so we just wanna select our object and scroll down a little bit. And so once we select our object, we can go ahead and we can click in here for a standard scatter. That's just going to show us generally where the chunks are going to be and how many there's going to be. Notice how you can adjust the number of chunks in here. Remember that more chunks is going to allow this to break into more pieces, but it's also going to be harder on your computer. So maybe I'll put in a value of 40. We're going to click on the option for accept for right now. And so you can adjust where those are by adjusting the seed right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to consider this good to go. We're not going to worry about any of this other stuff for right now. If you're interested, we can get more in depth on more settings in a future video. But what I want to do is I just want to scroll down and all I want to do is I want to click on the option for fracture. And so when I click on the option for fracture, what this is going to do is this is going to give me a preview of what this fractured object might look like. Well, in this case, I want to go ahead and I want to scroll down because I think this looks fine. And I want to click on the option for apply fracture now. So when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to take our object and it's going to hide our original object and it's going to take our new set of objects and put them in a collection right here. Well, now these are fractured in our scene. Now, if we were to click play, nothing would happen um, because there's more stuff we have to do. This is just a bunch of individual model pieces right now. And so now what I want to do is I want to move on to step two, which is adding our physics, right? So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to add a ground because we don't want this to fall just like into space, right? We want this to fall right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all of these objects. I'm going to right click into a select objects. And I'm just going to move them down so that they're aligned with the ground here. I'm going to try to not put them through the ground, but we're just going to try to get them close for right now. And so this tab is for setting up our physics, right? So what we want to do is we want to scroll down a little bit. And we want to click on the option for add rigid bodies right here. So when I click on that and I click on update, now if I click play, notice how this is going to fall apart, which is perfect. Um, we want that to fall apart because when we have our other object fall in here and break this, we're going to want this to fall into pieces. So now we know that our physics is working. So there's a bunch of other things that you can select in here, which we're not going to worry about too much 
for right now. And so now let's jump over into the constraints tab. Um, but what the constraints are going to do is this is going to allow us to um, set the way that these objects um, are constrained together or how they interact with each other. And in this case, I'm specifically worried about the glue, right? And so otherwise, as soon as we click play, right, this is going to fall apart. We don't want this to fall apart. We want these objects to kind of stick together until something applies more force in order to force them apart. So in this case, we're just going to click on the option for create constraint group right here, and we're going to leave our glue strength at 420. Now, if I click on play, notice how this object doesn't just break right at the beginning, right? So now it's just kind of standing there, which is perfect. That's what we want. And so actually, we don't even need this to be deactivated at this point because it doesn't fall apart when it hits the ground. So now we've got our constraints or our glue click together. Okay, so now I'm going to jump outside of RBD Lab for a second just to create my object that I'm going to use to break this. I'm not going to worry too much about the activators and the motion for right now. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to do a shift A and I'm going to add a UV sphere. I'm going to move it up like this and you can scale it a little bit if you want to just remembering to apply your rotation and scale and then I'm going to right click on it and shade it smooth and what I want to do is for this sphere I want it to fall down and I want it to break this object right but right now if I click play nothing happens so what I need to do is I need to come in here to my physics right here and I need to add a rigid body a rigid body is just an object that's active in your scene so like gravity is going to act on it other things like that so now if I click on play this is going to fall down. Now notice how when it falls down, nothing really happens, right? That's because the strength of this object right here or the weight of this object isn't more than the glue that's holding those objects together. So what I want to do is I want to take this object and I want to add, take my mass up to something way bigger, like 2000 pounds right here. That's going to affect how it, how it um, breaks the object down below. And notice how it's still not breaking this object right here because the glue value in our constraints is too strong. So all I'm going to do in this situation is just adjust that down. So I'm going to take my glue strength and I'm going to adjust it down to like 20 and click on update. Now, notice how when this hits this object, it's going to break like this. Now, if you have a problem in here where this breaks too easily, when you loosen that glue up, you could come in here and you could keyframe um, the breakability function. So what you would do is you would set a keyframe at the beginning that your object isn't breakable, and then you would set a keyframe right before the object hits your tower where it becomes breakable again. We're not going to worry about that right now because it's working for what we're trying to do here, but that is an option if your object just like crumbles as soon as you click play. All right, so now I've got this scene where this sphere falls down and this breaks this. And one thing that you could do is you could up the mass if you wanted this to hit harder. So you could put this to like 5,000 pounds or something like that. And the more it weighs, the more it's going to crush everything, right? So that's just kind of an easy physics thing. And so what we want to do is we want to start adding some particles and some collisions, right? And before we do that, because right now what this is doing is this is breaking this object, but usually when something breaks, you're going to have like debris and dust that flies off of it. So what we want to do is we want to make sure before we add those things from these tabs right here, that we want to bake our simulation. So basically that's just going to pre-calculate this. And usually I take this and I only want this to calculate up to a certain point, right? Because this is going to fall down and this is going to break everything. And then if I let this keep going for 250 frames, everything's just going to sit there, right? So really what I need is I need this to be pre-calculated up to maybe like frame 50 or something like that. So we're going to type in 50 right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the option for bake. And so what that's going to do is that's going to go through and it's going to pre-calculate the way that this works so that it's in memory. Well, now we can go into the particles section and notice how there's options in here to add additional detail. All right, so one thing I probably should have mentioned is make sure that you save because I had to redo this um, because things kind of crashed out on me um, when I started this step. So just make sure you're saving after every step. Shouldn't be a big deal if you're responsible with the way that you're doing that, which I was not. But now what we want to do is when this breaks, right, this gives us these big chunks, which is fine, but it's not especially interesting, right? Um, basically, it just sits there and it doesn't really look super realistic because usually when things break, they also break into littler pieces. 
Well, this can easily simulate that by allowing us to add debris, dust, and smoke. Debris and dust is mostly what we're going to focus on in this video. And so what I want to do is I want to click on the option for create debris. And so when I click on the option for create debris, what this is going to do is as soon as this breaks, notice how this adds little particles that are emitted from the object when it breaks. So it's giving us these debris pieces, which are smaller pieces. Note that this is basically generating these particles from the scattered objects that are in here. It's actually taking particles from a collection that you can find up in your uh, in your scene collection up above if you want to look at those. Um, you could also add custom particles in here as well if you wanted to, but it's basically using a particle system to generate debris in here for your uh, physics simulation. And you can adjust things like the size and the amount of debris. You can also adjust other things like the velocity or how far out this goes. So notice how if I up this count, we're going to get even more debris in here. You got to be a little bit careful because it can get kind of unrealistic looking if you add too much debris in here. But you can also adjust things like the size, of the debris, other things like that. You can also set the material that's applied to the debris. So if your object has a material applied to it, um, you can basically apply that same material to the debris so that they look the same. So in addition to the debris, there's also dust, which is basically just smaller particles that are created as well. So if I click on dust and then do this, notice how we've got a bunch of tiny little particles in here as well being created. And I'm not going to worry too much about the smoke for this particular rendering just because I haven't done a ton with it yet. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this. So if we jump over here into our material preview mode, right, notice how those particles are all getting rendered with this interior material like this. All right, so then from there, um, you've got an outer and inner material on each one of the uh, the chunks that are in here and you can replace those with your own materials. So I was able to replace this with my own concrete material. But then if we click on play, this is gonna give us this breaking animation right here. And there's definitely a lot more that you can do with this, but this really simplifies the physics setup process inside of Blender. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about RBD Lab. Remember that it is currently on sale through the Blender Market Black Friday sale for a couple days. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.